So welcome uh, Marina and Sophia and Roxy and Jack and Marquette and Jose and Jacqueline. Thanks for showing up and welcome Liz. Thanks for coming. Um, let's jump right to the quiz. Okay, so here's the quiz. And it says a study was done to estimate the number of times fully vaccinated people have gone out to eat in the past month. The researchers surveyed 10 fully vaccinated people and the data are shown. And we have uh, 47280781184. Okay, just a note, um, a big disclaimer. Whenever I say a study was done and I don't give you um, uh, reference. Do you know what that means? It's fake. Yeah, yeah. I just made up the numbers. So if I'm ever going to give you a real study that was done, um, I'll always um, quote the, uh, the source. And um, today we're going to do quoted sources. But this was just, you know, fake numbers so that we can have a nice quiz. Because real numbers, real study, why, why, is re why are real studies kind of a problem for quizzes? You know what the issue is? Too um, large of a sample size. Yeah, yeah, the sample size is so big, you're not going to be able to get it all into the into the calculator. Okay, then you need a full spreadsheet and the whole bit. Um, but for the quiz, I try and keep it simple and and give you a you know a smaller sample size. So I want to give you um, kind of a disclaimer here, and the disclaimer is that we have to assume the distribution is normal, and we can't do any of this. So that's just a note because the sample size is so small. In the real world, you get bigger samples. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but for quizzes, we're just doing it. Okay, so any, any questions on the question first on the survey? Okay, it says find a 95% confidence interval for this study. So I'm gonna, because I'm gonna need it, I'm gonna copy these numbers. And we're gonna go down and tell me what number I need to click on to find a 95% confidence interval. Yeah, it says number 10, we have data and it's about a mean, it's quantitative data. So I click on confidence interval for a mean with data and it says type in the values separated by commas. So again, copy and paste works really well on this. <clears throat> confidence level, well, it was 95%. Any questions so far? No, but I almost put just 95 instead of 0.95 and it said infinity. So I was a yeah. little confused on that. Yeah. Do you see the last sentence of the instructions in the calculator? Yeah, but I fixed it though, so it's good. Okay, good. The important thing you fixed it. Um, so I put that last sentence because that's a, that's a common mistake. Um, it's not an okay mistake, but it's a common mistake. Um, so I put it on there, um, at least for calculators, 90.95. And it depends on how it's programmed but that's why I put instructions on the calculator. And then I hit calculate. And there we have it. And the important numbers are the lower bound and the upper bound, okay? We will need the other numbers in a bit, especially S. But for now, let's look at that lower bound. And that one decimal place is enough. I don't think I told you how many, so keep it easy. Let's, let's go uh, here, sorry. No, I didn't say how many decimal places. So I'm just going to go one num one decimal place, 3.5 and 8.3. So let me, um, in fact, let me copy and paste the questions. Okay, so now we can actually answer the questions. Find a 95% confidence interval for the study. The answer is 3.5, 8.3, 3 8.3. 3 8.3. Any questions on finding the interval? Wait a minute. So, oh, geez. So the interval is just the upper bound and the lower, I mean, the lower, lower and the upper bound. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's as simple as that. Uh -huh. I messed that up. <laughs> yeah, nothing fancy. I mean, if you had to do this by hand without a calculator, this would be absolutely horrible. But I you don't. <laughs> yeah. 
do we have to put like like I remember in the in the lecture the other day you you did like the x bar and then like the standard deviation do we have to include that in like um part a um what you're remembering is central limit theorem stuff and this doesn't ask you this just said find the interval okay yeah if i asked you so the the wording of a question that that would have you do what you just suggested the x bar and the um sigma sub x but the the x bar tilde and and then you would have um mu comma you know sigma over root n that would be what is a, what what is a sampling distribution for this situation okay which i didn't ask you i just said find a confidence interval does that make sense Yes. Okay. And that is important because, for example, on exam two, chapter seven is part of exam two. And so I will ask you that for chapter seven stuff, but typically not chapter eight stuff. Okay. And then interpret. Question? Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, about the, uh, does it have to be written like the 3.5 comma 8.3 or is it okay if you just put in the, the upper and lower limit numbers in the thing what do you want to written like that um it should be readable that's the important thing the okay. other way people will write it let me just show you what's done in the real world so either the way i wrote it because I, I think the way i wrote it is the easiest to figure out given the calculator the other is we had x bar was 5.9 with a margin of error And then what you do is you say 5.9 minus 3.5 is 2.4. So of 2.4. That's another way of stating the confidence interval. Sometimes you state it as an interval like I've got it. And sometimes you state the sample mean and then the margin of error. And you'll see both. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, and then interpret the confidence interval. So my question right now, what's the first word? If. Not if, if will come up, but not on part B. Yeah, that'll be part C. <laughs> what's the first word on part B? Interpret the confidence. With. Yeah, with, with. So with. 95% confidence. Okay, so that's how you start interpreting a confidence interval. So with 95% confidence, now what we can say is, what are the two keywords I say always have to be in these interpretations? Population need. Okay, and I'm gonna put the word the before that because it grammatically works. The population mean, okay. And then, you know, if you don't remember, you can look out and say, what were we talking about? We're talking about the um, number of times that fully vaccinated people have gone out to eat in the past month. So I could actually, there's one good thing about doing it at a computer, which you did in your quiz is I can copy and paste that piece because that's what we're talking about. And it takes less time. So with 95% confidence, the population mean number of times fully vaccinated people have gone out to eat in the past month is between 3.5 and 8.3 times. Any questions on part B? Any questions on part B? So let me read it again that with 95% confidence, the population mean number of times fully vaccinated people have gone out to eat in the past month is between 3.5 and 8.3 times. Any questions on that? Okay, so now we're on part C. 
Okay. And these should look like what we did in, what I did in lecture a couple days ago. I gave you a template, remember? And I'm basically using a template. So what does it mean in this situation to be 95% confident? Okay, which is different than interpreting the confidence interval. Now we're interpreting the confidence level. What's the first word now? If. Now it's the if. So if many samples of, and I believe we had 10, right? Let me see. Yep, 10 fully vaccinated people, but I'll copy and paste that, so I have to retype it. So if many samples of 10 fully vaccinated people are taken, then each will produce its own confidence interval. Okay, and then our confidence level is 95%. So 95% of these intervals will contain the true population mean, and now it's going to be, I can just copy and paste the last part, because that's what the mean is about. Number of times fully vaccinated people have gone out to eat in the past month. Okay, and 5% won't. Contain the, the population mean. Okay, so in a way, you know, you're hoping that your confidence interval contains the population mean, right? That's the whole point of doing confidence intervals is, is you've got this interval and you're going to say, yeah, I'm pretty confident that I've got it, that I'm a winner here. You might be a loser, but you're more likely, much more likely to be a winner, 95%. Any questions on part C? Okay, now D. If the researcher was not satisfied with this interval because she wanted a margin of error of no more than 0 0.8, okay? So notice, by the way, our margin of error is huge, okay? Our margin of error is 2.4 here, okay? That's a, that's a big number when, you know, you're considering people are talking about eight times or so, okay? Or sorry, five times or so, okay? So it's a pretty big margin of error. Let's suppose we wanted a point, 0 0.8 margin of error instead. How many fully vaccinated people does she need to survey in, instead, assuming that the population standard deviation is the same as the standard deviation of the above sample? Which, by the way, the standard deviation of the above sample was, I'll just take four decimal places. So that's the first thing to note, is that S was equal to about 3.3149. Any questions on um, at least understanding what S is? All right, so what do I need to do? What is this asking for? Um, that N value. Yeah, the sample size, the N value or the sample size. And when you're looking for a sample size, what's the easy way of finding it? The standard error equals um, the, sample, or the standard deviation over your N. Okay, that's the hard way of finding it. <laughs> oh. What's the easy way of finding it? Who remembers the easy way to find the sample size needed? Here's a hint. There's a hint. <laughs> calculator 11. Yeah, calculator 11, sample size for a mean. I think you'll agree that that's a lot easier than doing it by hand. So our 
Standard standard deviation is 3.3149. Four decimals is bled plenty fine. Margin of error was 0.8. That was given in the question. The confidence level was 0.95. Anyone lost on this? This wasn't supposed to be hard. And I hit calculate N, and we're looking at 66. So she needs to survey 66 fully vaccinated people. Any questions on anything from this quiz? Okay, and by the way, if you wanted to show your, your work, so you can get partial credit in case you made a little mistake in the calculator, you would say S equals 3.3149, E is equal to 0 0.8, and CL was 0 0.9. Nine five, and use the sample size calculator. That way, if you make a mistake, I can still give you points. Whereas if all you do is you give me a number and if it wasn't 66, then you don't get points. Okay, maybe I'll give you a mercy point, but, but you don't get a lot of points. Any questions at all on Anything from this quiz? Any questions? Okay, if there aren't questions, then I'm gonna go to our agenda here. And we're on Q&A time. So I know I asked you about questions for the quiz. Do you have questions about anything else? Do we so have another group project in this class? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk about it next week. The problem is, is a big part of the group project is about hypothesis testing, which we haven't done yet. <laughs> so if I started explaining the group project, you might get lost. <laughs> Does that make sense right now? I just needed a yes, but okay. Yeah. yeah, but what you can do now, if you haven't already, is make sure you have your partnerships. So um, recommended three, less work if there's three of you, because then you can divvy it up by three people instead of two. Um, but one is not okay. Big, big, big penalty if you only have one person. So you need to make sure that either it is a pair of you or three of you. And you're allowed to use, you're allowed to work with the same people that you worked with last time, but you're also allowed to change, okay? So you should, if you wanna work with the same people, you should definitely contact those people to make sure they still wanna work with you and they're still in the class and all motivated and all that. Okay, so that you can do now, but it's not, it's too early to get ready for the project because we haven't had hypothesis testing yet, which is the big thing next week. Okay, but that was a good question because the project is always, that's a big part of the course, so. We have a second project. And I only give two, by the way. So there'll be a second project. There is no third. When I started, I used to give three and it was kind of overwhelming for people. So I now give two. Okay. Any my grade in this class, so. <laughs> it, does, it, it can help the grade, that's for sure. It could hurt the grade too. <laughs> if your projects aren't as good as your exams, but you know, but it definitely can help. Um, other questions? Okay, if there aren't any questions, then I'm gonna move on to confidence intervals for proportions. And it's the same idea in that you have a sample and you look at the statistic from the sample and you know you don't know about the whole population so you don't know about the whole population, but you got your sample. So the question is, is your sample a good guess and how good a guess is it for your population? That's what confidence was all about. So last time 
we only looked at quantitative data. So we looked at data at which the, um, you list the data and they're all numbers. Okay. This time today, we're gonna focus on proportions. So we're gonna focus on the yes, no survey question. Okay, so that's the plan. And it turns out the ideas are the same. The, the math is different, but the ideas are completely the same. Um, you got to be careful about language. You shouldn't use the word mean if you're talking about proportion and vice versa. If you're talking about means, you shouldn't use proportions. So one of the hard parts is to make sure that you, you know, keep track and focus on what you're working with. So that is the idea of what we want to do. Any questions on the idea first? Okay. And I'll just kind of set it up a little bit. I don't want to do all of the mathematics. But basically, we had from the central limit theorem, that's the big theorem, we had that p hat and then tilde. Oh, yeah, it never does a good tilde. Makes a tilde too high. So p hat and then tilde and then n. And then if you remember, it was P comma, and then there was a square root of P, Q, and Q was one minus P. Actually, let's write it this way. P, whoa. P, Q over N. And I know that's tiny, so let's make it bigger. So that's what the central limit theorem gave us. That as long as the sample size is big enough, that p hat is approximately normally distributed with mean p, population proportion, and the standard deviation, the square root of pq over n. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a confidence interval using this idea. And the key is N. <laughs> when you have a normal distribution, you can draw a normal curve, you can, look at, you can look at proportion, you can look at area under it, and you can say, what is the left and the right bounds? Uh, I'm not gonna go over all the picture stuff because we did that last time and it's no different. It looks exactly the same as what we did two days ago. Okay, and the idea is if you have a 95% confidence interval, then you go out pretty far. If you had a 99%, you go out even farther. If you have a 90%, you don't have to go out as far because the area is less. Okay, so all that, nothing changes. Any questions on this idea? Okay, what's new here is mostly the language. We're talking about proportions and not means. And I think I could, you know, I could do more theory and all that, but I think you just get bored and lost. So what I want to do is I want to do it by example. I think that's the best way. And the great thing is it's really easy. It's really easy to come up with examples because I just go online. That's what I like to do. I like to go online, find a news article. They're everywhere. Okay. And one of the places I like looking at is, is um, actually I looked at Yahoo for this one. So if I click on this guy, This is a little Yahoo article. And it's Biden approval buoyed by his pandemic response. Okay, so President um, Joe Biden is plunging into the next phase of his administration with a steady approval of the majority of Americans. Okay, by the way, do they know, do they know that Biden has the majority of all Americans approving of him? No. No, they didn't ask everyone. Okay, that never happens. Okay, they didn't ask me. Did they ask any of you? I've never had anyone say yes. Did anyone get asked by the Associated Press? Okay, I don't see any yeses. Okay, one of these days, okay. like in my life, maybe I'll hear a yes. Okay, that you you were the one that was- How serving. would you feel if I lied? 
I don't want liars. I don't believe in, I, there's no reason to lie for this. You're not making any money off of it. You're not getting anything out of it. <laughs> the only reason to lie is to become an agent of chaos. Yeah, no reason to do that. That's That's enough a, for me. There's no reason to be evil. Okay. Oh, lying, is, lying is a bad thing. <laughs> okay, so don't lie. Okay, so the survey shows Biden is buoyed, particularly by the broads, the public's broad backing for his handling of the uh, COVID pandemic. All right, so in the fourth months of his presidency, Biden's overall approval rating sits at 63%. All right, so now I got some questions. Now comes the big question, and I'm just going to use that one. Okay, is it true that Biden's overall approval rating is 63%? for all Americans. What do you think? No. Yeah, we don't know that. And the answer is almost certainly not exactly 63%. Okay, because this came from a survey. Any questions on that? All right, but they got 63%. Are you pretty sh are we pretty sure that the majority majority means over 50%? Are we pretty sure the majority um approve of Biden? And that's something that you don't shouldn't have an answer yet. Okay? But do you understand the question? Okay, so one thing is pretty sure. Let's let's quantify the words pretty sure. What do you think pretty sure might mean? Since we talked about this two days ago, what do you think pretty sure would mean? At least statistically. Okay, like 80%, mm, 80 was not the number we used. 95. 95%, 95%. This is political science. Political science always uses 95%. Just let you know that. <clears throat> so the question is, what is a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all Americans who approve of Biden? Any questions on that? What is that confidence interval? And for example, if that 50% sits in the confidence interval, then we're not pretty sure that it's a majority. But if the 50% is far away, then hey, we're confident that it's over 50%, okay? In fact, we'll be confident of something to something and we'll see that. Any questions on kind of reading this article and now understanding it more fully because we know statistics. All right, so now um, I'm not gonna read the whole article because we have more things to do today. But I will tell you that if you scroll down a bit in the article, they surveyed 1,842 Americans. Okay, by the way, is that enough Americans to survey? No. Yes. <laughs> I like that. No, yes, depends on who I ask, right? <clears throat> How many Americans are there? 350 million, roughly. 350 million, right? Um, but let's consider adult Americans because, you know, you, you can't ask a six-month-old baby whether they approve of Biden. <laughs> you totally can. You could ask you them. You get a great answer. You could ask them and they'll smile and laugh and giggle and you'll, you'll, you'll be happy, but, but it won't be worthwhile in terms of understanding statistics. Okay, so let's go for adults. And besides that, legally, you can only ask adults. So even if you did the adults, then we're talking still like 250 million people. And we only surveyed 1,842. Okay, so, so there's a few questions. One, is that enough to be able to do statistics? Yes, because it can't be too big. Okay, it's a yes. I'm looking for some numbers, though. Um, for the poll? There's a key number. 
to be able to do statistics, which means use a normal distribution so we can calculate probabilities and stuff. 30? Not 30, this is for portions. 30 oh. was for means, very, very important that whenever you have a proportion, right? The, the survey question here is, do you approve of President Biden? Oh, within... Hmm? Oh, within 5%? There was a number five, but not 5%. So it was a little more complicated than that. It was NP had to be greater than five. Well, NP here is 1842 times 0 0.63. Our, our best guess on the proportion is 63%. Is that greater than five? Yes. Oh, it's a lot bigger than five. It's over a thousand. Okay. I'm just gonna write greater than five. I mean, you could actually calculate it, but I hope you can look at that and know that 63% of 1,842 is not five or smaller. Okay. And similarly, NQ, which is equal to 1842 times, and now it's not 0 0.63. What's Q this time? For this example, if P is 0.63. Yeah, so that's 37%, right? Because it's 1 minus 0.63, and that's 0.37. By the way, 10% of 1842 is 18. So 37% is even bigger than that, and 18 is bigger than 5. So it's also bigger than five without having to do any fancy calculations. Any questions on that? So therefore we can proceed and use the normal distribution in the calculations. And pretty much, if, if you don't have bigger than five, you just give up, okay? Or you survey more people until you do, okay? You, you don't do, you don't try and do statistics if NP and NQ are smaller than five, you, or, or five or less, you just give up, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, so that's the first piece, is we can check that, and that means we can proceed. It does not necessarily mean that the sample size is big enough to have good um, data, as in the confidence interval might be wider than we want, but at least we can find the confidence interval. Okay, so one way of finding the confidence interval is doing all of the formal mathematics using like over and beyond calculus. Do you think we're going to do that? Nope. Definitely not. Okay. So what's the other way to do it? Yeah, we use the calculator. Okay. And the numbers to remember, 1842 and 0.60. I'm going to just copy them both so that I don't forget because that's what I'm going to need. Um, and 95% confidence level. That's what I need. That one I can remember. I just use the standard. Okay. And what we get is we need to go to our calculator. Here's the calculator. What number do you think we're going to need? One hint is we haven't used this calculator yet in the class. Um, yeah, no, number 12. Number 12. So confidence interval for a proportion. We want a confidence interval. There's a yes, no survey question. Do you approve of President Biden? So it's a proportion. Any questions so far? Okay, so I didn't forget. I copied and pasted it. So 1842 was our N. Our X. So we actually need to find X. X is a number of people 
who said yes. Just to let you know that it's not the proportion, it's the number. So if I go to the scientific calculator and I calculate 1842 times 0.63, It gives me 1160.46. By the way, did 1160.46 people say yes? No. No, why, why would that be absurd? Because it's so, it would mean that it was more than uh, 63%. No, no, that actually was 63%. That's exactly 63%. That's not the issue. Okay, has to do with the decimal here. Can we have 0.4 person say yes? Can that happen? Hopefully you all know. <laughs> okay, it's not some math question. It's just just looking at just common sense. Can you have point of point four person say point four six person say yes? Is that even possible? No, no. You you can't you can't you can't partially say yes. You say yes or you say no, and that's it. There's no fractions allowed, no decimals allowed when it comes to the number who said yes. Any questions on that? So what we should do is round. And if you use rules of rounding, uh, 46 is less, or uh, four is less than five. So that means we round down and we have 1160. Any questions on that? So for X, you got around because you can't have a fraction person say yes. Doesn't even make sense. So like normal uh, rounding rules apply if you get like a decimal like that, like you wouldn't round up even just because it's above 11. No, you, no, you, you, want, to round, you want to round to the nearest whole number. So the, 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 yeah. the, the four down, five up. So if you speak Japanese, that's actually the word for rounding in Japanese. <laughs> that cool? So everybody remembers it in Japan. <laughs> so unfortunately we don't have that in English. So you just gotta remember if it's four or lower, you round down, five or higher, you round up for the, for the decimal, first decimal. Okay, confidence level, 0.95. That's what we're doing. And we hit calculate. Okay, and I'm gonna round to the nearest, um, nearest percent. I think that's probably the, no one really cares about, you know, 0.7% uh, or something like that. So I'm going to go 61% to 65%. Any questions on that? Or 0.60? Oh, uh, sorry, 0.61 to 0.65. So what we can do is we can say our confidence interval. Is equal to 0 0.61 comma 0.65. So by the way, was Yahoo reasonable in saying that the majority of people approve of Biden? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, 50% isn't yes. even close to this. So this definitely says, yeah, the majority approve of Biden. Next week, we're going to be able to formalize that. But we could even look at it with confidence intervals and say it's obvious in this case. Any questions on the confidence interval? All right. Is this, um, is this feeling like the same as what we did a Tuesday, except as proportions instead of means? Are you noticing the similarity? Okay. Easier? Maybe. I don't know. On Tuesday, we had a mean and a standard deviation to type in. Here we have a, an N and an X to type in. <laughs> so I think it's similar. Okay. What might be easier is that on Tuesday, it was brand new and you didn't know what was going on. 
and easier might be a good sign that you understood Tuesday and now you have nothing to learn because you've got it. That's a hope. <laughs> okay. So let's interpret or state the conclusion. What do you think the first word is going to be to state our conclusion? With. Yeah, with. 95% confidence. And now it's not going to be a population mean anymore. <coughs> what we could say is, in this case, the percent of all, very important, the word all Americans. And I'm going to write adult Americans because that's what this is. Of all, and I'm going to highlight bold face and red in the all because that's necessary that we're not talking about the 1,842 Americans anymore. Now we're talking about the population of all adult Americans in all of America. You know, there's hundreds of millions of us. Okay. So of all adult Americans who um, think that, or Biden, or let me just write uh, who approve, uh, Biden is between and now it's 61 percent and 65 percent. There's other ways of wording it. You could also say with 95 percent confidence between 61 percent and 65 percent of all adult Americans approve of Biden. It means the same thing. With English, there's a lot of ways of saying the same thing. But the word all must be there. And of course, the numbers must be there. Any questions on this? Okay, so we're confident it's not lower than 61%. And we're confident it's not higher than 65%. Okay. Now, just something to note, and this is important. We only looked at 1,842, and we could be pretty confident about the entire population of America just from this 1,842 out of the hundreds of millions of Americans. And that's good enough, okay? What assumption do you have to make, here, hint, hint, from chapter one about this study? From the first week of class, what assumption do we need? Or what do we have to make sure is true? Who remembers? I don't see y'all jumping in. So you have to make sure that the study didn't have bias. Do you remember that stuff? That their sampling technique was representative of the population. Whereas if they, if they had a biased sampling technique, then this is nonsense. Okay. And I don't know all the details about their sampling technique. I didn't do the full research. Um, but if they had a lot of bias, then don't trust these numbers. Any questions on that? Okay, but if they use like good stratified sampling and stratifying by many areas, you know, probably political affiliation would be one of them, especially with uh, Biden support. You know, you don't want to just ask Democrats, you don't want to just ask Republicans, that'd be a really bad idea, because you won't get all America, you'll get very biased. So I would, I would stratify by definitely um, political affiliation. Okay, and there could be others, maybe age or income. Um, but definitely political affiliation. Any questions at all on the conclusion? All right, now let's do what we did last time. After state the conclusion, and this time too, because we had a quiz, what did you have to do?
So what I ask you to do on the quiz after writing down the conclusion or interpreting the confidence interval. Um, explain what the 95% confidence interval means. Yeah. And I'll just write interpret the level of significance. Okay. And it's very similar. If many studies or if many uh, samples of 1,842 uh, adult Americans are surveyed, then each of them will result in its own confidence interval. Okay, so again, if we asked another 842, we're not going to get exactly the same number of yeses. Okay, it's very unlikely. We can get a different number of yeses. And we'll get a different confidence interval because of that. Okay, but what we can say is 95% of these confidence intervals will contain the true population Notice it's not going to be mean anymore. What's it going to be? Here's where it changes. Proportion. Yeah, proportion. Okay, so on the exam, the next exam, don't get, don't just write mean because that's what's in your notes. Make sure you pay attention. Is it mean or proportion for what you're referring to? So they'll contain the true population proportion of Americans who approve of Biden. Any questions on that? Maybe I'll put a space there and there. Any questions? Okay, I want to note something because we can do it easily. Is would it be better to be 99% confident? What do you think? How do we find out? Put it in the calculator? Exactly, put it in the calculator. And it's really easy. You change the five to a nine. You know, it's always nice to be very confident, right? And then we calculate. And notice now it's 60% to 66%. So did you notice that the, um, the margin of error went up, right? Our width of the confidence interval went up. But is that good enough information? Or do we now have just like worthless information? What do you think? Still good because it's still the majority? Yeah, still looks pretty good. If what you care about is majority or not, or how much above the majority, then it's still good. Any questions on that? Okay, and maybe we could check the 90-90, the 90% also. Very easy. Because now we're less confident. That means we have a bigger chance of it being a loser. And eh, it got a it got a little more narrow than before, but not much more narrow. Do you see that? So I don't see any reason to use a 90%, do you? You might go for the 99% because you still have good information. So I want to mention something, and this is important, and a lot of, and I'd say half the students don't listen to me. <laughs> and you know what happens if you don't listen to me? You lose points, right? And that is on the project. You're going to have to explore different confidence levels and make a decision on which one you wanna use. And you wanna start with 95 because that's standard, but then go up and down and see whether it's, it's worth going up and it's worth going down. Does that make sense to everyone? And you're gonna write a paragraph about that or so, or at least a few sentences. Any questions on this idea of exploring the confidence level? 
Okay. Turns out you won't be doing it with this calculator. You're going to be doing it with the spreadsheet, but it's no, no different. You just retype in the number just as easy. Okay. And you're, you're, you're going to be using a different piece of the spreadsheet because it's going to be two weeks from now when we have a two samples instead of one sample and we're going to compare them. And we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. So I want to give you a heads up. Any questions at all on exploring the confidence level? Okay, are there any, any questions about confidence intervals for proportions? So I wanna, I wanna do a disclaimer or a, a heads up. If you don't have any questions, that means you're saying you're ready to do it. You can do your own. Any questions about confidence intervals? Okay, we're gonna try something new. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share what I've got here so that you've got the link. Okay, so it's in the chat box. So you should be able to go to what we're looking at because you're gonna need to go to it. Okay, and the next thing I want we want to do is I'm going to have you do, as I said, you're going to have to do the full analysis of a confidence interval, just like I just did. Okay, welcome back. Um, so who wants to go first? Don't all speak at once? You can go first. Okay. So the two of you, um, why don't you explain what the article was and talk about your confidence interval and interpret. Sound good? Okay. okay. If you want, if you want, I can talk about the article. Yeah. So. Um, and are you okay having this posted on YouTube? Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Okay. No one really cares. No one really watches this anyway, except our class, but you know. <laughs> I have to ask for legal reasons. Okay. Okay. Do I do I go ahead and start? Yeah, start. Okay. So the article was on. Uh, um, well, it's first of all, it's titled as redress for slavery. Americans oppose cash reparations. So, um, in short, it's it's talking about you know whether um, the the group of Amer the percent of Americans that agree with. Um, you know, pain reparations to um, to African Americans uh, based off like slavery and whatnot. So it like categorizes into um, into race and ethnicity, and then um, and then a political affiliation, and then party ID with leaners. So it just um, gives in a beef a brief. Um, summary of like the percentages and um, Americans as a whole, which is 67% should not make payments. And then 29% that it should make uh, payments to the group. Okay, did you get a confidence interval and interpret it? So that's- Oh, yes. Yeah, so, the wow. confidence interval um, we first used was 0.95 or 95%. Um, and the interval was 27% uh, to 31% of people who um, said yes to reparations. Between twenty seven and thirty one Americans say um, yes to reparations. And this means that if Oh yeah, the sample size, I don't think we mentioned this, was 2,543 adults. 
So if many samples of this size were looked at, then each would produce their own confidence interval and 95% of the confidence intervals will contain the um, uh, proportion. Oh, I think you're muted. So the population proportion. Yeah, the population proportion. Of what? Um, which is 29. No, you don't know the population proportion. You never know the population proportion. But it's the population proportion of all Americans who what? Who um, agree with reparations. There we go. Okay. Any questions, Roxy or Marquette? Oh, also, we forgot to mention one other thing. We also did um, 0.99, which would um, bring, bring out a higher interval if you were to do it. Uh -huh. You mean a wider interval, right? Yes. Sorry. Uh -huh. Any questions? Okay, thanks. And hopefully this is helping understanding what this all is about. That's what this is about, is if you have to do it, then you're forced to try to understand. <laughs> okay, uh, Roxy and Marquette, you want to um, present? Uh, yeah, hold on. You're both muted. Okay, um, so we did the fourth article, which was titled, Global Warming Attitudes Frozen Since 2016. Um, and this article was a Gallup poll that indicates uh, people's views on global warming have not changed much in five years. Um, so that's essentially what the article is about. And we use the statistic that around, uh, where was it? 59% of adults believe that uh, global war the effects of global warming have already begun. So I'm going to toss it to Marquette for the, uh, what's it called? The thing. Yeah. She knows. Interpretation. <laughs> well. Marquette? You're the muted. conclusion. Yeah, Marquette, you're muted. Sorry, having technical difficulties. Um, yes, so with our article, we... Um, went over the survey, which included 1,010 um, American adults, 59% of them of whom said that um, the effects of global warming have already started to begin. Um, so that being said, with 95% confidence, we can conclude that the percent of all US adults who continue to say the effects of global warming have already begun to happen is between 56% and 62%. All right, and then uh, the level of significance. So if, if many samples of 1,010 American adults are surveyed, each of them will result in its own confidence interval. 95% of these confidence intervals will contain the population proportion of Americans who think that the impacts of global warming have already begun. Okay, Jacqueline, Sophia, any questions? I don't think so. No. Any questions? Anyone have any questions about anything? Okay, if not, then it's my turn. And I'm going to share my desktop again. And we're going to do the very last piece, and that is sample size. We talked about the sample size already that's needed for a population mean. And now we're going to be talking about proportions. And it's a little more complicated, but it's not that hard. That's not where people have that much trouble as long as you pay attention to what, what's given and what's asked. So let me show you the ugly stuff first. And um, so we can find the sample size needed for a confidence interval for a population proportion. That's what you want. We already know NP and NQ have to be greater than five, but that may not have a good margin of error. You, you, you might want a much bigger sample size, okay? So for example, if you know, around half are gonna say yes, 
that would mean that you only need 11 people or, or maybe 12 people, maybe, maybe 15 if it's a little off half. And that's never good enough. Just let you know, you have giant margins of errors if you have such a small sample size. So in this case, um, if you have a preliminary estimate, that's different than if you don't. So if you have a good guess at the population, that's different than if you have no guess. So just to note, the margin of error was Z sigma, and that is Z times the square root of P times one minus P over N. That's a part of the central limit theorem. I can solve for N and I get N equals P times one minus P Z squared over E squared. Okay. And, but often you have no idea what the proportion is for the population. You just do in confidence interval and you're gonna take a survey, you haven't surveyed anyone yet. So if you don't know, um, it turns out, and I'm gonna just say this quickly, which means you don't need to know. It turns out that if you graph this, you get a parabola and the vertex is at 0.5. So if you let P equal 0.5, you get what's called the worst case scenario. So the worst case scenario means the highest number of people you need to survey. And you end up with 0.25 times Z squared over E squared. Okay. Again, so I don't get in trouble, I, I need to, to say that. Okay. But how do you think we're going to do all of this? With a calculator. Yeah. But there is a, there is a formula and most other classes use the formula. And I'll tell you the honest reason why most other classes use the formula. Any guesses? There's actually a reason. My guess is you don't know, but you might. Because you'd need it for a later class or something. Nah, you don't need it for a later class at all, unless you're a math major. <laughs> Memorization? Nope, should I tell you? <laughs> sure. Because most other classes use the TI-84 or, or Inspire calculator and it doesn't have the ability to find sample sizes. You actually have to use the formula if you're using that calculator. That's the reason. So it comes from that. And I created my own calculator and I figured, hey, I can make it happen. <laughs> so I like to be better than those Texans people. <laughs> so here's an example. So suppose that you want to find a 99% confidence interval for the population of Proportion, population proportion of cars in the United States that are electric vehicles, so EV cars, okay? You want a margin of error of no more than 3%, okay? You don't wanna be off by more than 3%, and that sounds reasonable, right? How many cars must you look at? Any questions on the question? Any questions? Okay, just based on this, do we have any idea from what's given what the population proportion of EV cars are? Do we have any idea what that population proportion is? No. no. Yeah, we, it doesn't show. Okay, we have no idea what that population proportion is. So that means that we don't have a preliminary estimate, okay? So all we know is I'm gonna write CL for the confidence level. What's CL? It's not a trick question, it's written there for you. Confidence level? Yeah, what is it? I'm looking for a number. Uh, 0.99 or 99%, whatever. Yeah, 0.99, okay, because given. We want a 99% confidence interval. And then E for margin of error. And what is that? Point zero three. Point zero three. So I want to emphasize the fact that you need to turn these into decimals. Okay, you can't write three. Three won't work. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Does it matter if you add the zero before the decimal or do you just have to but do... 0.99 in the calculator, just. Yeah, it, so let me tell you that what's up. It doesn't matter, except it does for teaching. <laughs> if I don't put the zero, it's harder to read. That's the reason. Oh, okay. Um, calculator doesn't care at all. 
but it's easier to see the 0 0.03 than if you don't have it because then the it, it's just harder to see. Okay, so that's the only reason why it would matter. If you're ever going to be a teacher, then you want to make sure you have the zero. Otherwise, don't worry about it. <laughs> calculator doesn't need it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my calculator. And let's um, back to the calculator menu. And let's see if you can tell me what calculator we use. Uh, 13. Yeah, we use 13, sample size for proportion. We want a sample size. Any questions on that? Okay, and it gives you a choice. No estimate for P or have estimate for P. What, do we have an estimate or we have no estimate? Which one? No estimate. Yeah, we don't have an estimate. Okay, we already kind of decided that but it asked for that, but I wanna make sure that you're aware that there's no estimate or have estimate. Okay, E was 0 0.03, or if you want 0 0.03, I don't care. And then CL, 0 0.99. Any questions on using this calculator so far? Okay, I hope you know what to do next, which is? Calculate? Yeah, click Calculate N. And we get 1,844. OK. So let's write this out. So we need to survey. Or we need to uh, not survey. You don't survey cars. You need to look <laughs> at 1,800 and what was it? 44. cars. Any questions on that? Okay, now let's do a little bit of thinking. Is that something you, like if I told you you had to do a project, and you can do proportions, and you realize that you're going to need to look at 1, 1,844 cars, do you think you'd have time to do that? Nope. Probably not. Okay. Probably not. Unless you work in a place where cars are just flying through every all the time, but probably not. Okay. That's a lot of work. So just let you know that you, you should always worry about things like this. Okay. So if you want to do a really good study and you don't know anything about the population proportion, then you're in for a surprise in terms of the amount of work or effort or worse, um, if you own a business and you got to do this, you're gonna you can't do it because it's too many. You're gonna have to pay people, and it's gonna get very expensive. Got it? Okay. So instead, let's look at part B. Notice this is part A. So let's go to part B. Okay. You look at the data from last year. Okay. And 2.2% of all cars were EV, okay? And by the way, I, I looked at the data. Um, I just went to Google. And it told me 2.2% of all cars were electric vehicles, okay? Now, that doesn't mean it's the same this year. But now if we want to get a 99% confidence interval with the same margin of error, okay, no more than 3%, what changes? How is this part B different than part A? We have a preliminary proportion? Yeah, we have a preliminary estimate for the population proportion. So let me write that out because that's the whole point. So we now have a preliminary estimate. for the population proportion. And what that estimate is, is P 
is equal to, okay, it's our estimate. So it's not going to be equal to that, but it's our best guess. Um, how do you write 2.2% as a decimal? Zero point two, uh, point zero two two. Yeah, 0 0.022. Very important you get that right or it's going to be a total mess. Okay. So you always move the decimal place over two to the left. And when you do that, the first one just moves it to the other side of the two. But the second movement adds a zero in there. Any questions on that? All right. Everything else is the same. Okay. Let's see if it's any different in terms of our answer. Notice we needed to look at 1,844 cars if we didn't have an estimate. But if we do, now I can click on have estimate for P and notice it automatically gives you a box saying estimate for P. So I programmed that. And that was 0, 0.0, let's go 0, 0, 0.022. Any questions so far? And I hit calculate N. Do you see any changes? All right, what's our end now? You guys on? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So 159, what happened? Is it life easier or harder? 159. Huh? Never mind. It was blocked by the thing. Oh yeah, I was blocking mine too. That's why I didn't answer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that that's probably that's Zoom, probably. Probably the pictures and stuff, you have to move them around and see the right hand side. Sound right? That's a yeah. zoom thing. Yeah, if I'm, if, whenever you see me pause, that means I'm probably moving my chat box thing around. <laughs> so 159 is in. So let's go back. And now we have to, we need to look at just 159 cars. Okay, it's still a lot of work, but nothing like 1844. Big, big difference in turn of deciding how many you need to survey or how many you need to look at in this case. Any questions on this idea? Any questions? Okay. So now you might have a good guess. Any, any guess on why for your projects you were required to use quantitative data instead of yes, no questions or proportion There's questions. a lot more to go through to convert the qualitative data into uh, numerical, numerical values to use to do statistics with. Yeah, it, it turns out the sample size, and this is just an example, but the sample size is four digits to have a decent study if you have the yes, no question. Whereas if you have a quantitative study, you typically get numbers under a hundred, okay? To, in terms of what you need, if you want a good margin of error. Okay, so it turns out that typically with a yes, no question, you need to do a lot more work <laughs> in terms of surveying. And I don't wanna be evil. You know, I know you may feel like I'm evil sometimes, but I try not to be evil and having you do a yes, no question and saying you need to survey a thousand, that would be, I think that wouldn't be fair. I don't know if you agree with that. Because I don't think you'd, you'd have time to do that. Okay, but to ask you to survey, you know, 31 people that you can do. And typically, not only for the normal distribution, but typically for the margin of error, that's good enough. If it's a, um, talking about a quantitative data. Any questions about anything about confidence intervals? Okay, I wanna mention what's gonna happen next week. 
Next week is decision making. So confidence intervals, you got your, your mean or your proportion from the sample. And you can say you're confident that it's eh, not too far away. Next week, what we're going to do is we're going to make a we're going to say, what if we have to make a decision? Can you think of any situations where it was an all or nothing decision they had to make instead of getting a confidence interval? Life There's lots support. of them. Huh? What's that? Life support. Okay. Although with life support, you usually are in a hurry and you don't have time to do surveys, but it could happen. <laughs> If it's a long-term life support, that's true. You know, do you think that the person's gonna, you know, wake up and live? <laughs> Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, and then you're gonna have to make that decision, yes or no. Does that make sense? Is it worth it? So that would be one. Um, the vaccination is a biggie, okay? The FDA approves or it does not approve. Do y'all know that? So they have to make a decision. It's not just an interval. They have to say yes or no, we're gonna let it go. Okay, that's another, that's a biggie. Another biggie, I don't know if you've ever done this, but jury duty. Any of you been on jury duty? Not yet. Okay. You don't kind of, you don't say, well, kind of guilty. <laughs> you ever heard that before? <laughs> yeah. That, that doesn't happen. It's guilty or you don't have enough or you don't have enough evidence to show that they're guilty. Does that make sense? Okay. You actually don't say innocence. You say we don't, we, there wasn't enough evidence to find the person guilty. I don't know if you've ever been on jury duty, then you, you know that because you had to make that decision. Okay. Among you and the other, the group of jurors, I've only had to do that once. Um, but that's one. So again, FDA approval, guilty, not guilty. Um, lots of, there are lots of places where you have to make the decision. You know, do you want do you want to go bankrupt if you're a business person? Okay, you never want to go bankrupt, but is being going bankrupt the right thing to do? And again, that's going to be what we're doing next week. We're going to make these decision makings instead of intervals. So I'm going to stop my share because it's 5.50 and I'm gonna stop the recording. And by the way, I'm gonna, there'll be a long pause, but I'm gonna, it'll take a while to get this one done. <laughs>